Welcome to the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show a podcast. I'm the big beefy boy, Shaz Beef. I'm joined by my fellow old buck, Morrow, and the Kenny Omega of the crew, Johnny Martz. <laughs> I am riddled with these. He's a Brandon Cutler. He's a Brandon Cutler. Michael Lagazawa. Have you already, boys? <laughs> it's the three of us again, just like last week. Yeah. Just the three of us. And we're going to kind of carry on from the conversation from last week that just the three of us did when we were talking about the occult. And we were talking about the presentation of it and how super natural elements probably can't work with the right presentation so that guy's thinking into the whole presentation of certain things in wrestling it stems on from our tag team talk about having identifiable tag teams not just people that are randomly thrown together like when you match outfits you look like a tag team like in real life yeah, yeah. like if we were all wearing the same we'd be looking like a, we would look like the coolest guys in the world that in the is world. a fairly cool Irish top thought to be fair. Awesome, I like your Macho Man Randy Savage t-shirt. Yeah, dig it. Yeah, would you say you dig it? Oh, that's a beautiful shirt. <laughs> you look like shirt. you're ready to go to the pub tonight. I, uh, maybe I am ready to go to the <laughs> pub tonight. You, you, you look like a, 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 an off-white Lex Luger showing up at Nitro. Nice. This is more card riding blouse. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, every every pub in Kenny tonight will be your WCW Nitro. <laughs> the just Mall walk, of America. Just walking in like that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if only I had the long lock. When we did the podcast, uh, the review, when I had the laugh attack of um, when you talked about Vince, Vince McMahon shitting on people uh, <laughs> and I lost my shit laughing, uh, all I could see for 30 seconds was my bald patch. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't had my hair cut since. <laughs> got, in, in the vain hope I can cover this uh, this thing up. That's, got, why, that's why Aaron Anderson never laughed in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> He's always the serious wrestler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep the head down, staring into the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John Cena is accepting it. Is he? Yeah. No, he's not. He's fighting. Like, I went bald for 2018 to 2023. <laughs> I thought you were about to say 28 years. Uh, I, I went bald. I, 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 Seven I, trips to Turkey later. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I, I should have gone to Turkey. You weren't in Dubai at all. I should have gone to Turkey. I was living in Turkey. <laughs> yeah. And so I shaved my head off. I said, I'm bald now. I just shaved my head off. Shit my hair off, and uh, you know it looks pretty good. It looks pretty badass. So which, I decided I'm gonna have one last run with the hair. You which, know what is, I mean? which is which <laughs> is. That's what rad. I feel about having a beard. This That's is not great. Yeah. <laughs> this is my uh, Sting AEW yeah, run right yeah. here. Randy the Ram Robinson. <laughs> yeah, one last yeah. run. <laughs> Presentation um, is very it's important. Very it important. Is. <laughs> Look at Cesaro. Didn't Cesaro kind of ca- get shit from uh, Steve Austin for like not properly shaving his head bald? Yeah, he yeah, had a couple I'm, of runs there where you could tell Claudio just was fucking t- uh, spending too much time in the coffee shops. And <laughs> well, like he, he would the, just have he because he's a, he's obviously a man who was balding from like his early Ring of Honor days. Yeah, yeah. And then when, when he eventually embraced it, and I think once you go fully bald. And there's no hope You're going to say in hell. You never that go back. That full head of hair is coming back. Don't fucking half arse it. Kurt Angle. Am I half arse it? No. No, you're you're no, you're fucking you're perfect. Yeah, you, but if I put my head down, you should have no, a match. No, you should have a, uh, you should have a, a debate match where the loser has to cut their head. Yeah, yeah. Go pure Kurt Angle on it. Some just, lads are just condemned to be fully bald, and they really need to accept it. The Rock and Kurt Angle are very good examples of this. <laughs> mm. So just take. You don't, go, don't go in between. You know what I mean? Like you John just Cena. Go, it or, sounds like an intervention. No, John, John, no, John Cena's got a decent enough amount of his head to justify uh, hair in his head to justify just keeping hair Keep for a while. Sean, that needs to go. That got really gnarly towards the end of his run. Yeah. Like you could see how bald he was. And One he, of the Jacksons. Uh, no, he went to Turkey. Did he? Yeah. Oh, if you look now, is uh, Nick, Nick, Nick Jackson? Nick he was, he was getting very thin, wasn't he? If you look, if you look at him now recently, the hairline is so much oh, fuller. Fair, fair play. Uh, and I, I believe. Danielson mentioned it on a podcast that there was four or five uh, AW workers who had the the Turkish the Turkish job done. Fair play. The teeth and all. I don't know about <laughs> teeth. I don't know about teeth. But yeah, had the Jim hair. Snisky needed some teeth work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, a few. I think four or five. He's, Daniel said four or five and got the hair done. And Nick Jackson is definitely. Spe- one. Speaking of AEW, right? The the presentation. Uh, it's weird to go from teeth into the the teeth of of wrestling, as I would say. The the guardrails and the the board. You know mm. the the skirt. The, the skirt. Teeth. Famously, the teeth of wrestling <laughs> and the oil, which is our tongue. <laughs> 
the lights, the lips. <laughs> I, think was, I think it was Muchnik who said that, wasn't yeah, it? That I was think his it was, analogy, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm happy with it. But it, they recently changed up their, their style mm. um, of how they present dynamite. And I think it's to the detriment. I hate this Agreed. new LED light stuff. I, while I can get it, especially when you're, say, recording a Ring of Honor taping or you're recording a, a, a rampage and then immediately doing the dynamite or whatever, you need... A, a quick change WWE with WWE speed into main event into raw whatever it is but I, th- I think it makes it look too clean clean like you know we grew up during the we drew we, we grew up during the attitude era where they had fucking guardrails and signs in the crowd yeah but like I think that made it look more raw and gritty and therefore contributed to the action in the ring having that the big thing for me effect. with AW going to the LED boards is it now they look too much like WWE. Right. Whereas before, when they had the old school of just the drapes over it or whatever you want to call that material, uh, card right perhaps, mm. uh, a blouse-ish <laughs> a blou- material bla- perhaps. A blouse material, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, it was very much differentiated from WWE and that was reflected in the style. But now that they, they're they starting to homogenize the look of pro wrestling across the board, I think it hinders the product a bit actually. With TNA, they had that distinguishable two different entrances and they had the ring, which made it stand like a, out at the a time. A six-sided ring in and of itself and the fact that that worked for so long, like, that was that was cool to watch. It was cool. I, apparently a nightmare to work in. Yeah. Um, was it a nightmare to work in? Apparently apparently so. wrestlers You're just didn't a like professional it. wrestler. Who, who, I've never worked in, I'm not a professional wrestler. If any of my trainers are listening, I'm not I telling these lads that I'm a professional. He tells us all the time. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm, like, I'm showing them all the holes. I was like, this is how you do a hammer lock. <laughs> Um, I don't like, like you know a, a six sided ring is definitely I mean you're kind of very used to like as a performer I suppose you're going to argue, our stage is always going to be like in the middle of the arena or gym or ballroom or whatever the case may be auditorium um, but then to have it where it's like the thing itself completely it, changes shape and you're going in completely different directions mm. and you spent your entire career getting used to orientating yourself towards okay that's the hard cam that's like where the so I have to hit the ropes over here are, yeah. like imagine the rock uh, I doing the people's the, elbow most of the audience are there so I gotta play it to them yeah, yeah, yeah. doing the people's elbow On to the hard sides. cam in a TNA ring you know he couldn't chaos he'd, he'd have to do it that way to that way Hulk Hogan with a leg drop you know there's nothing to hit off the ropes uh, even diving to the outside you yeah. know what I mean you'd have to dive at a certain angle although wasn't the the multi-sided ring, six-sided ring, the home of the greatest triple threat match of all time. Yeah, yeah, with the, uh, Samoa Joe, Chris Daniels, Chris and AJ Styles. That was in 2005, yeah. That was I mean, but those, those were guys trying to make it work, and I think that was a really worthwhile experiment for the presentation of wrestling because we're, we were so conditioned at that point mm. with the four-sided ring, and it really marked TNA when they started up in 2002. And for a marketing thing, Jeff Jarrett said that they couldn't get their ties on the shelf, but when they said, oh, we have a six-sided ring, they were like, make that. Yeah, We can sell that. You know mm. what I mean? We can't sell a, not a base. Say, not a lot similar to how the elim- Elimination Chamber was conceived as well. It's like, that's a fucking hell of a toy. Yeah, yeah, true. But also, it's, right? It, they went pure Batman on it. Batman Forever on it. Just to try and sell Cages, ties. pods, screens. Yeah. A, 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 lad, a lad reeling out a few riddles. And then the, me going, yeah, i fucking take it all. To me, another great example of like the six-sided ring being like a visual reminder of this is different, this is the alternative, was the Lucha, Lucha Underground set. That was amazing. That was that. Yeah, but really that, that really yeah, it's not a six sided ring. No, no. no yeah, the, yeah, the presentation. The Aztec yeah, arena. The Aztec yeah, arena. It, yeah, it, went, it, like, it was like a you know a, an arena where like specifically built for the fights. It was very mm. much kind of video game um, inspired. It had yeah. a bit of a Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat it's a Kumite. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like a Kumite here. Yeah, it was. It was cool. And then like obviously all the like Aztec kind of iconography around yeah. it, like. That looked it looked unique and it was a whole new way of presenting pro wrestling. And mm. they did it they, with their backstage vignettes. They made it look like you know it was shot. It was a short film. They made it mm. look like a movie. Which in that universe, then it it worked because you could go, oh, okay, this is the wrestling that I'm I'm watching. It wasn't a re- wrestling society X where they had paid extras in the crowd that were told to cheer and all that kind of mm. stuff. But this was a viable alternative. I tell you what, like one thing I did really appreciate when I was young, just in terms of a massive shift in presentation, and this was like before I like I'd seen images of ECW, but like mm. there was no there was just no way of getting at, at this point I wasn't seeing ECW tapes or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. But when WWF presented a uh, shock on Saturday night initially yeah. in ninety seven, where it was like the wrestling is going to happen in a fucking train station. It's going to happen in the back room of a pub. Yeah. That was very cool. That yeah, was cool. it was. And was you're, cool. you, I think it was The Rock and Triple H was in a pub one time, and you look back on that, and you're like, oh, wow. Mm. That 
that, and Where's like that even the even the image looks class. But they've tried to recreate that, say with Raw Underground. Dude, yeah, yeah. Just, I know, like, you know, like, lines then like, matches. Do, do you know what's a cool one? Uh, and it's infrequent. Uh, we mentioned on a previous podcast is the Josh Barnett's Bloodsport shows. Yeah, yeah, that's the no ring unique. on the kind of jujitsu style mats. Um, that looks really cool. I know Raw Underground was a, a, a kind of a, a take on that. But while these concepts are all great, you know, no one's going to get to the behemoth of WWE. So is that why AEW are somewhat trying to... I think it's a couple of things. One is... Imagine changing the channel. You're like, wrestling? But my missus, when I'm watching AEW, she can tell that there's a distinguishable difference between AEW and WWE. Mm-hmm. As in, like, this looks crap, she says. Well, AEW looks crap. I, see, yeah, she's I, like, this I, doesn't look good. I, I hate the WWE look the modern WWE look because I think it's too slick it's too slick yeah I don't especially want my... with their graphics but, but I do think they're... to be honest like that's not you know that's an opinion of based off the last 20 years or so whereas at least at the moment they're they're trying some really interesting new camera angles yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. like that, that. Level of presentation production is really good is, is they've really upped again yeah but that's uh, the presentation that's all all part like, of you know it, when you have the drone of Logan Paul at, at, mm. or when you have Sammy Ka- Sammy Zen's uh, the in track Montreal shot. the track yeah. shot you class. have uh, Ludwig Kaiser running around the ring and getting speared by Braun Breaker and they're doing an overhead kind of yeah. shot and even the overhead on the ladder match and all that, they, that that's all cool different angles. Mm. I think, it allows you to see it in a different way. Yeah, so I you're think, not just seeing that hard cam LED stuff. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think that, I think there, I think it's a really smart thing to do in 2024 is to look at the like lang- like pro wrestling has been on TV since what like the 1950s mm. um, and it's been presented in so many different ways but it's been so stale for mm. the last 20 years. There hasn't been any updates. And even AEW like just seeing that that was fresh in and of itself yeah, just the yeah. way it looked the way it was shot initially now it has gone a little bit tired and they need to mix up the formula but uh, it took t- w- when, w- w- when, w- w- 20 I'm, years to mix up the formula they're finally doing it now and I think it's when it was the already, first they thing, just mixed it up though you see so it, like, it was the first thing that stood out for me in 2017 when I started watching New Japan mm. was the style of the camera work yeah you used yeah. To, they'd shoot from up shoot yeah. from up and look yeah. And like so, and to shoot up, and then to do the like to do zooms, like when you have Okada doing the rainmaker or the you know the yeah, pose, the zoom that looks and yeah. AW stole borrowed that for the best friends hug and stuff. Mm. You know, like that was yeah. I really enjoyed that was because we had gotten so used to being presented the the stale static WWE style, and now WWE have taken what AW and New Japan were doing and pushed that even further. You said you had points in regards to. Uh, what well, I said about my missus said it looks different and I cut you off. Sorry, yeah. I it looked it, I agree it looks different. Um w- we've been watching wrestling for years and years and years. And the, like you said the modern W You had a full head of hair when I had started. a full head of hair when I started watching wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I went bald now I have a head of hair again. Yeah, I think it looks <laughs> That's how my, and I hate I don't like it the WWE look it's too slick particularly the Still still yeah. Like I like the the change up in camera usage, but still the set and arena is too slick. For I think, yeah, but the the set and arena have started to change. Like, remember back in two thousand and one, where you had backlash and you had the swinging. Mm. Yeah, uh, every single pay per view had a very a specific team. King, King, like King of the Ring had the electric chair kind of yeah. thing and looked badass. And then everything just became big screen. Yeah. Everything was big screen. Now they're starting to kind of minimize their sets. Yeah, sometimes. because I think. Mm. Because Remember when AEW came along first, and each of their four pay per views at the time had a, a distinct look as well. well now they did change. Po- they the, had a few poker, the poker chips. chips and stuff, uh, but. I was like, yeah, d- give me more yeah, of this. Yeah, and Revolution had like the, the platform, the yeah. old WCW style platform, uh, you know, uh, that entrance way to the ring. Yeah, ring. Daily, yeah. Daily's Palace, that, like, that was That's a, so a, unique. A Daily's Palace entrance. is such a great venue for wrestling. Yeah. The side entrance, the view of the sky in the background. It's, it's, w, it's almost the early WWE 90 stuff. Remember, they'd always come in yeah. through the side as opposed yeah. to just facing directly on the ring also I think and this is a complaint uh, I have uh, all the companies and I really thought AEW were going to do this differently because they kind of started in a way that went in that direction was to let the arenas go to that they go to feel distinct from each other yeah like if you um, remember the first time they went to Arthur Ashe in New York mm. the whole thing looked and they did Danielson Omega the whole thing looked different I was like yes and they did the show off Jericho's Cruise look different. Like, remember WCW used to bash at the beaches on the beach and they did 
was it Hog Wild uh, Biker yeah. Rally Ro- Road Wild Road Wild yeah. yeah and you let all these bikers come in for free yeah. to watch like a pay per view <laughs> no, they didn't give a shit about what was but going it was, on uh, but, but it like was they, so they rev their motorcycle yeah. engines and, and even when they did the Mall of America did, that kind of yeah Mall of America yeah Mall of America and even that doomed NWO pay per view uh, sold, sold out, out, sold out but yeah. there was a real attempt there to make it look like a completely different type yeah. of show I, I think than anything else they were presenting the world needs the world of wrestling needs more than that and that's why NXT 2.0 I think everyone just immediately turned off it because it started with that color scheme. The color scheme was awful. It was so Vince McMahon yeah. and fucking Kevin Dunn brained. Yeah, it was. Just, it was just horrible. Whereas, like, I mean, I think where it is now, it's like it's the balance between hey, it's still connected to what it was when people talk about the black, black and, gold and gold brand. It's that, but they've got a whole new alignment. It's very much not trying to repeat. Okay, you know the classic years of NXT twenty thirteen mm. to twenty nineteen. Say. Is going. This is a new era. It's a new version of that, rather than like throwing the fucking baby out with the bathwater, as yeah. Vince McMahon is always willing to do. Mm. Uh, WCW they suffered when they changed up their set from the iconic Nitro minimalistic into yeah, that. Yeah, they got rid of. All they had to do was kind of just do an updated version of that, and they again baby with the bathwater. They they threw, threw the whole the fucking whole thing. thing out and then revamped, revamped it, it within a year. And again. made it look yeah. very just sterile and, and generic. It didn't, it's really generic. It didn't stand this, out. This There's no innovations in it. If you watch UFC. Uh, you can you have absolutely no idea where they are when you mm. watch. They purposely make everywhere look the exact same, and it drives me mad because they go all around the world, mm. even probably more so than WWE have done. And again, I'm like, this is in this Manchester. crazy arena in Manchester or in Japan or in Dublin. Singapore, and I'm like, it just looks like the exact same as a basketball arena in America, mm. when in reality. It's not. Why are you doing this? I don't understand. And like do even this. even football matches. If you watch football matches, like the stadium you can, is you, part of it. You know that they're in the burnabout. Yeah. You know that they're over the camp in new. The, yeah. The uh, Westfallen, um, the Dortmund stadium. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, all these stadiums have personalities. A lot yeah. of these arenas but do the, as well. But that was the thing. It was like you know when people were talking about the territories. You know, in each territory back in the you know the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, like places had very like the Greensburg Coliseum or like the Keylord Auditorium or. Or the uh, sports arena in WCC sport, sports WCC arena down w. in yeah down d- down Texas. in Texas and the mm. one in um oh, Madison Square Garden uh, that's like Madison, Madison, that. Madison Square Garden Royal Rumble two thousand WrestleMania yeah. ten Royal Rumble two thousand you know you're in Madison Square Garden mm. so a, a big question for you right like uh, WrestleMania next year is coming to Las Vegas yeah it's going to be the second Las Vegas WrestleMania after WrestleMania nine. Do they do the WrestleMania 9 presentation again on a bigger that, scale? Uh, that was in Caesar's Palace. Uh, yeah, but... Do you go Palace. Roman Hogan? <laughs> I don't think you go Roman Hogan. Uh, if, if I was Triple H, just put it there, I would. It's going to be in the SoFi Stadium, isn't it? That's the... Yeah, I, I, I think the, the I think the stadiums last, of WrestleMania have started to blend into well, each other in my mind. They had, and when they started doing the stadiums first, they didn't. Mm. Yeah, they didn't. Like WrestleMania thirty and thirty one look really different from yeah. each other. The, the one in New Orleans was that thirty. It was thirty, and yeah. it was thirty four. Yeah. It's been back it? since then again. I I, 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 I I go back to our cult episode. I would have loved a Papa Shango appearance in New Orleans. Yeah, hey, I've, I've always loved a Papa Shango. The idea of a Papa Shango appearance. Um, so like uh, the, the actual presentation what we see on TV uh, and the way it's it's put to us with say backstage even vignettes and the mm. way they turn and they're looking at the TV or you yeah, know the yeah. cameras yeah, that cameras in on a private conversation I think camera awareness is a big yeah. thing you know uh, you, did you, multi-place cameras did you enjoy it when TNA uh, had that kind of thing where it was just someone walking around with a handheld camera I really like that style yeah. I, I like that kind of covert kind of uh, almost a little bit documentary-ish but kind of you know, we shouldn't be hearing this we're peek- yeah we're peeking into the which is actually quite kind of dodgy in and of itself but the idea that like <laughs> You know, there's backstage meetings in different especially offices. In different offices, yeah, especially in WWE. Actually, probably would have caught a few more crimes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the idea that this stuff is not supposed to be overheard and mm. it's not for public consumption. And uh, it was a little bit more like Big Brotherish and re- like that, that kind of. Like, I know, used to love when the camera would catch up on what was happening. So you'd see the I cameraman running to be like, oh, uh, I have to document Yeah, when this. you got announced, going, oh, yeah, so the director's in my ear, there's a camera running around backstage looking for this person. Yeah, and then this. you go straight into that. Yeah. Mm. AEW brought, had a lot of that in at the jump. They've lost it a lot since. Mm. But um, I think AEW are trying to almost overproduce this stuff. Because when you look at the anarchy in the arena, which is chaos in itself, but you had. Uh, Darby Allen seemingly under a load of stuff and got run over with a truck, and then they had they utilized the the stage that goes up and down the elevator of the stage. Then you had fire involved, and you're just like, okay, this this is an overproduced. That match, though, 
in, 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 it's, in it's called anarchy in it's itself. supposed yeah. to be overproduced yeah, the best part of the match was when uh, the final countdown was planned mm. you know that was unreal, and, yeah, yeah but like when yeah. you're wrestling in a match and people were like we want the music and not you know, yeah, if, if I'm wrestling a match called Anarchy in the Arena and people are chanting for more, mm. more of everything, more I'm like, music, yeah, give, yeah, them, every, I think give I, them everything. I think I'm pretty satisfied with absolute chaos in the match, and also yeah. a wrestler being uh, fucking set alight with a flamethrower. That yeah. was grand. I was, I think it looked. I got it, my money's worth from that match. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. yeah. it, it it looked cool. It probably is, is the best instance of fire being used in a wrestling match I, I, I remember thinking, MVP and Kane I think had a fucking yeah, Inferno, Inferno match, match. Like, <laughs> alright well like well, like, you know it's a bit weird because you go the guy who's in a complete bodysuit and then another guy who's in a complete bodysuit <laughs> <laughs> which one of them is going to be set on fire <laughs> it, it was almost, and it was like the, remember the first blood match with uh, Steve Austin and, and Kane Ken, yeah. and you're just like Sure, if Kane Kane's bleed, not bleed. Like, all, that's, all that's and Kane is his arm. That's all that's exposed. Yeah, so if he does bleed, you're gonna need to get like Varen in the middle, yeah. like <laughs> just, just to check Kane for <laughs> where he's. I remember the Hell in a Cell being involved in that. Um, the Hell in yeah. a Cell, the way that's looked over the years has that changed. Was, I mean, they ruined that. I mean, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also again, it's just like it's pretty old at this point. Hell in a Cell when it first emerged in like 1997 was obviously a very much an attitude era update of the traditional cage match, which yeah, had been popular yeah. for uh, or decades a, previously. Or 1v1 war games. Yeah, yeah. 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 And like, it, it was an innovation within the cage match and it endured and it should have. It just mm. just got a bit overexhausted. It went to the well too much with it. I think as well, um, like if, if you look, they started using a red cage and they started using like putting different lighting on the I cage. I like the old blue cage. Oh, the old blue cage. And the black really. cage in the actual yeah, blue there. bars, yeah. And they were, the, they were the, you know, the big ones for the big guys to be able to climb up. I thought that looked cool. Yeah. But, like, the presentation, once again, they're definable eras in, mm. in, in everything here. And, like, it doesn't just come down to the way it actually looks. It's the way that you perceive things within the, 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 the content or, or the process. And that brings me to world titles. I was just going to say it. The world title. I think the world heavyweight championship that... Uh, is currently held by Damien Priest. I think it's fucking turgid. I think it looks terrible. I just really wish they had just reinstated both the belt and the lineage of the big gold belt. The big gold belt is beautiful. Mm. And I think just to have that particularly for What's like... What's the nicest world title in wrestling today? I, I don't know if it's because it was the one when I was a kid and I first got into the winged it. Eagle. No, no. The winged eagle is the, the, winged, the winged eagle. Yeah, but, I love the undisputed no, but the one that's well. there today... Not like I think the Intercontinental title is terrible. It gives me ire. Yeah, the like, oh, I WWE have a major problem with the look of their titles. The tag team titles are they terrible. I could shit. I could at least understand what they were trying to do with the big W's in yeah, look, in, it's a it's a corporate thing though. It's, yeah, but no, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could understand like the same way UFC, if you if you gift someone a, a, a title or they're wearing a title, it's clearly it's just it's WWE. Branded, yeah, yeah. Um in terms of world titles, I hated the the new uh, the new Japan one that they changed the to. The new one is yeah. so bad. The it's old t- one the old is one's brilliant. beautiful. Yeah. OTT's world title is fucking amazing. Mm. It is, is it the same absolutely... one that Walter had? Yeah. I haven't changed so. it since then. It yeah. wasn't the NLW title. Been an, has there been an update? Has there been an update? They, they have update? Been, like, the well, Walter they, they one, I love... The red strap. Yeah. yeah. So yeah I, 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 like, that's a beautiful uh, world title. I loved title. it when Walter had it. I thought it looked deadly. The In, AW one looks great. In the AW w- one looks fantastic. It looks like a world championship. Yeah. Like, the WWE ones are just I think so AEW, for the most part, I mean, since they've got the women's title finally up to scratch, that started off that a little was bit too small. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. great. But now it looks good. Uh, the TNT title was a banger from the beginning. I think the yeah. TBS. TBS Well, not from the beginning. Because they, remember they, Cody had introduced it. Well, I feel it was, like every incarnation of it was actually still pretty aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, but it had to be, I think they had to premiere that before the dude that they yeah, even finished. Before finished yeah, making before the belt. Well, I remember yeah. looking at it going, that looks shit. Like, yeah. is this, yeah, oh, this weird. yeah, this looks like a hokey Hard company. Hard to get belts made, made during the pandemic. I like um, the North American title because it has a bit of... That's one of the best new WWE yeah, ones. That is the best new WWE ones. It has a WWE bit of character to it. Yeah. And, uh, the, the recently debuted women's North American title also looks really good as well. That does look and good. And uh, the US New Japan title? Yeah, that looks decent. I, I, yeah. I, I, I like that one. But like... Not just from the way it looks, actually how it's presented on TV, and we've seen it now in WWE in the past few years, that they're putting extra emphasis on it actually being prestigious to hold a title. For years, Chris Jericho had said it. He goes, what about if I win the Intercontinental title for the 10th time or something? The only man to ever do it. And Vince was like, oh, no one gives a fuck about the Intercontinental title. And you're like, well, no, we do. We did. And Chris really did. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, like, we saw that with Sammy and Gunther. 
Yeah, like people he, did care. Don Belt is is pretty much close to being back to the level with, of prestige that it was in, to, in thanks to the eighties and nineties, which yeah. is amazing because it, it was shit on for so long. It meant nothing. The tag team titles meant nothing. You know, they're trying to restore these. We're passed around tag like team titles need a lot of work. But they still I think, need a lot of work. I think yeah. I think AEW is is at that instance now where it probably just feels like the world title is the only title that matters. Which you know, because they've over diluted it. The fact that too many championships. The international and the continental. I mean, like I, the, team. the joy of the continental for me was like I was like, oh, this is always just going to be uh, defended as a as a triple crown. That's yeah. it. And now it's just like a belt that Okada has. And yeah, then the yeah. international is very it, close to. If they'd kept it as a triple crown, it would have been fine. And I think yeah, and I think the problem there as well is the fact that like the TNT was introduced as a television title. Yeah, yeah. And then you know the TBS title is the women's television title. Yeah. But like you should have established your secondary title, a la a US title as was the case in the NWA and WCW, or the IC title, as was the case in w- WWF. Like, you establish what the secondary title is, and then you the TV title is your, like, your third, third title. Yeah, but yeah. Like, uh, and, whereas they did it kind of... Because like, the TNT is probably as prestigious as International, but the International obviously seems to be the one that's been positioned as, like, their version of the Intercontinental. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the Atlantic title initially. The All-Atlantic all title initially. Title, which, yeah, yeah. Which, which is another thing. It just changed over. And then you have the Ring of Honor titles, which are perceived on it. And then you have CML people coming in. And then you have the New Japan, it's, uh, it's too many. You had they had triple A champions like Omega was the mega campion. Yeah, that's um, yeah. And the, the the initial tag titles and, in and TNA, AW and were TNA as well. World tag titles. Yeah, and and TNA as well. Then you have trio titles, and you yeah, like the Hattie Amalgam at the Ring of Honor trio titles. Yeah. With the, and you're just like, oh, if there's so many titles and everyone has one, the well, particular well, ones did, can't be important, and that's why I'm a massive advocate. Of the brand split for AEW. No. Because you can put the Continental on one and you can put the International one on one. And then what and do you then, do with the TNT title? You know, it's just too many. It just defends you, on, it's just defended on TNT. You, you That's what it is. It's a television do, title. And then the, you can have a, like one brand being a tag team brand, one brand being a three O's brand. And then you're putting emphasis on those particular things and that's why I th- why I think WWE does it well I prefer not to have two world champions I prefer to there just to be one which was the initially going to be the case with the undisputed title before Triple H was handed the world title mm. but it gave impetus going this is the main title and then you're, you elevate the Intercontinental and US title by proxy because that becomes the big belt on whatever brand mm. the US t- or the world title isn't being defended on AEW could do the same I, I I like the way they mix up like different things to be defended and that there's like it's not just belts and titles but you know AW has like the dynamite diamond ring and it's like that yeah, lad, I, that, that rich like scumbag that. is is defending his ring and then you go to NXT with the heritage cup and you're like that's the fucking school trophy that these lads are yeah. bandying around that, no, that, that's great I like that yeah then you got the million dollar belt where it's like this is literally and the, the most FTW. expensive belt well, yeah but these these yeah, are these, these yeah. are these are brand specific like I loved it when the cruiserweights were just on SmackDown. And then you had the hardcore title on Raw. Early days Cruiserweight Classic was very good around like mm. 2016. WWE were on something there. Because it was presented there. well. It was yeah, presented and different. It was different and it had its own look. ECW it had its own nice distinct stand. look. Yeah. And own you know what was great as well? Uh, the first two NXT UK Cups. Yes. They were fantastic. In Blackpool. In Blackpool. Yeah. But the joys had been in a ballroom. Yes. You know? it, they looked, and it like just it suited the different. vibe that they were going for. Yeah. It looked like British wrestling. E- ECW uh, One Night Stand in the Hammerstein ballroom. Yes. Amazing. Unbelievable. Unique. Yeah. And like it just catches you right now if they keep doing stuff like that. But you can do that once a year and well, you don't turn it into. WWE light, which is what they ended up yeah, doing. Yeah, but that was the case with like WWE's version of ECW. It's like Vince already has two brands. He has then he's going to relaunch ECW as a third brand, and he just makes it look exactly like the other two brands. And, and you know, and, and people lose interest. People lose interest because it doesn't seem unique and it's not marking itself out as being a different, different thing, a different different brand. And you bring Ken or someone over to be the champion, like Kurt Mark Angle, Henry, Jack Swagger. Yeah. Kurt Angle made sense. Big show. Kurt Angle made sense. Jack, sure. Jack Swagger would have made sense if he was. Jo- yeah, if, well, if, well, he was in that he was a debutante in there, like same a punk. Like, Seamus. Uh, yeah, but he he went straight. He didn't he even get the title. He, but, did, he was. But he, he had a good. He had a good ECW run. With Goldust, wasn't it? He had a, a feud with Goldust and a feud with. 
uh, Shelton Benjamin as well, I think. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, before Shelton he, Benjamin when, makes sense in ECW. Because there's a they're... lot of people who do, but it's just a presentation outside of those first couple of weeks where they were in the um, same ballroom. Um, it just looked exactly like any other WWE show, and unfortunately, like for the you know for bones of twenty years, Vince McMahon just shaved the personality not just out of the uh, not just out of the TV shows themselves, but also the arenas that they were in. Like mm. when you look at even like you know changing formation from Madison Square Garden at WrestleMania twenty. All right, it's a different thing from Mad- Madison Square Garden, but like stick to what works. What's the yeah. yeah. event? Yeah. I, re- I remember Garden. being pissed off. Yeah. That they, I know it was WrestleMania 20 and they wanted to make a big hoopla about it and stuff. But I remember being pissed off seeing that because I was expecting the old school entrance of yeah. Madison Square Garden. Yeah. They did it at WrestleMania 10 and Royal Rumble 2000. 2000, yeah. They did it at and Royal Rumble 2008 had it as well. Yeah, like yeah. stick to that. Like that's yeah. your yeah. iconic look in, in an iconic venue. Yeah, and then why are you mixing it up for WrestleMania of all things? Yeah. But like gradually, you know, over you know, the course of the last two decades, it just got ironed out where everything started to look the same. And, yeah. and then initially when they started running like big stadium shows for WrestleMania, first, they, they all look different from each other. And then, you know, they just... They all, all had the personality of the play. Remember they were in Tampa Bay and they yeah. had the Buccaneers type thing. Exactly, and, yeah. No, that was, that was went, recent enough. Yeah, um, uh, 36 when they, oh, 36 was the pandemic one wasn't it no it 30, was 36 was the pandemic that was meant to be then and then I that was supposed to be all pirate, pirate yeah, they, there was a, yeah but there was a remember, well, well, Kevin Owens was going to jump then, off a pirate ship yeah. yeah ever since then they've just been the exact same yeah So was I, it, I think before then like, for I, they start to morph like, into one before that, I, I thought it was a pandemic no after, there was one thing in, there was a thing in Orlando remember they had the the roller coasters and yeah. all that kind of stuff but they definitely because the Buccaneer Stadium has a big a pirate big ship, ship in it, the they had to incorporate it. I gotta say, there's been a chronic lack of castles at Clash of the Castle. <laughs> yes, like, like, yes, they are near castles, but the Clash isn't happening at the castle. It's if I was Scotland, I'd be, would you be pissed with the fucking dragon being in the Clash of the Castle thing? Because that was a Welsh thing. Well, I tell you one thing. Ask Scotland have dragons I went too. to Shakespeare in the Castle Park last year, right? The Castle Park in Kilkenny. Yeah, yeah. And it was Shakespeare at the Castle or whatever their title was. And the way they had arranged the seating, the castle was at your back. Oh, so you yeah. couldn't even see so it. So the stage is here, and the castle is back here. Wait, you're, looking at, you're looking at a lent of grass. Yeah, yeah. Just a load of grass. The playground, a load of kids in the background. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is what I paid. I'm just for. looking at a load of grass on the stage. I'm like, it, could have, it didn't have to be in the castle park. That could have been the fair green. And it comes, uh, you, co- you come down to the presentation of the wrestlers as well. Uh, presentation of divisions. Like, the, no one gave a fuck about the tag team division for years um, because they weren't presented. As, as anything, tag things that, as tag teams, yeah, you had a lot of single people joining up and then they'd give the tag team titles a push and then you have DX against Ray at RKO and it's, okay, and then they fucking fall into obscurity again. I, I think that was the real uh, strength of New Day. Both in attitude and design, yeah, they, they looked they, like a unit. They made themselves identifiable and they presented themselves in a, in, in a unique way, yeah. which is what, should that not be across the fucking board? Like wrestling is a, I think, a strange I, thing that is going to attract unique characters. Yeah, I, I think that's what I like about. Like, I don't think they're the greatest tag team in the world, but I like the acclaim. That's, Sh- that's Shelton Benjamin. They are the, the world's there. greatest tag team. Yeah, you can't take it away from them. Um, I, I like the acclaimed because yes, they both have two distinct individual personalities, but as a team, they look like a team and act like a team. Uh, and that's they have, sweet they have really. a handshake. Yeah, you know? and they have this, a funny handshake. They have a funny handshake. Like small things like that for me make tag team wrestling cool. Like look at FTR, right? They could be accused of having a born presentation. Because what do they do? Yeah, black real, trunks, real whatever. plain. Yeah, but their attudes match each other perfectly, and then they stick on the old. And there's, a, there's a whole nineteen eighties like aesthetic that got the kind of George Umroder music and yes. all that, like the typography is. Yes, and it's so evocative of a particular era of wrestling. Yeah. but with a mo- like a modern twist it's, on it. I love it. I love because it. they're also like you know in a, in a modern context they're like uh, you know sensitive vulnerable men. Who talk about their they're feelings? Like Hangman, the millennial cowboy, you know <laughs> the millennial. They're, but they're a bit like that, and it is like an update on that kind of yeah. T- well, Tony and Iron Midnight Express who type have team. feelings, T- but they have feelings. Now. T- yeah, talking about sure. fucking uh, the millennial cowboy, like I remember being pissed see, when Hangman changed up into flowery pants, Ew. and you're like, no, just you had perfect with the trunks, but go Magnum TA on Hangman like that. Cowboy when, and Western team shit is a, is a, is a wide church. There's a lot of variations. When Hangman that started that wearing Hangman pink do. shorts that were three sizes too small for him and his belly and chest are sticking out and he's swamping pints, I was like, 
This is just me in the mid 2000s. I, I love this I, guy. I, I related so hard to that version yeah, of Hangman yeah, in every way. Me too. Like, there's, there's me on Roots Weekend again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. in my cowboy yeah, era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a cowboy hat. Huh? <laughs> let, let me drive. And I'm listening to the Dead South. <laughs> uh, no, but let him be Magnum TA. Like just have a yeah, I, but he was. Too, but he, he's done a Magnum TA riff now as well. Yeah, and he he'll do something else. He'll be other some other version of a cowboy. Don't fucking wear a fucking flowery pants. But, it, but it, is, it comes back talking about presentation. It's that Chris Jericho thing that he's. I don't. Know, Chris Jericho shouldn't be the one who gets the credit for it. It's also very much a Terry Funk thing as well. Mm, Terry this Funk's idea, probably the best. This example. Con, this uh, co, uh, constant um, evolution evolution of your character and reinterpreting you and your character and freshening up for is different that, audiences uh, every couple of years. And that's going, great. Okay, when it in well. this year what am I to this era that's mm. great when it works well but then you have Alex Riley wanting to you know be full of rage he, he rage Alex he, Riley he didn't even know what he was in fucking 2011 like you had you know, Ale- I think you need to have a firm sense of identity a- Alex you need Wright. a base point Alex you know? Wright was a dancing man and was like you know what I'm gonna get on this whole fucking blade thing and become like a techno person and he became Berlin Mm. See, but that's also another shade of his like heritage of his yeah, dancing. Evol- yeah. Yeah. Evol- like, he went on holidays to Berlin, ended up in that big five story nightclub. Yeah, and yeah. came back and was like, Do you know what? This is even better dancing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do- yeah, he was probably in these fucking like sex dungeons and everything. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. comes, then he comes back like with the fucking the, mohawk and the fucking the, the P- PVC waxed chest, yeah, and- fucking yoked up to the gills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, off his chops. I just said, just evolution. Just, the evolution isn't always like Big Boss Man's evolution. We've talked about that. That works. That, that was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, from to go for prison 90. guard, personal spot team. Yes. Yeah. yeah, like fantastic. And his presentation as that person, as a like Big Show's fucking or his run with Big Show and like what he was doing <laughs> when he came back. Like he was a golden generation guy, and what he was doing in the attitude area yeah, was just when so. When he get crashed, uh, Big oh, Show's oh. father's funeral. And he, by Jesus Christ, he dragged that coffin up and down the highways. <laughs> 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 but he Mate, fed- man, Big Show hanging off the back, but then he went and he fed Al Snow's dog Pepper to him. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it's <was> amazing. <laughs> and then he got hung. And he kept his job and he got hungry. Well, that was that was for all his transgressions. Oh no, that was actually before that. Was that. Before that's probably that. yeah, yeah. origin story, villain yeah. origin story. That's, that's what, what set him uh, off. That's what set him off. He got hung by a bunch of vampires at work. <laughs> then so he, he went then to he love. started feeding lads or dogs <laughs> and, and hijacking his co-workers at lads' funerals. <laughs> Ah, uh, he wasn't in a good space. God bless him. Uh, he, he, he wasn't long for this world either. <laughs> one Ray Taylor. <laughs> this one's oh, for Ray. R.E.P. Um, but his evolution was great. I just don't think a- a- Hangman's. Oh, uh, Hangman's is great. Like, like, remember when still telling the story? Remember when Rusev like showed up in a Daffy Duck T-shirt? In AW? No, in, in WWE. The, I think he was running no, no, Daffy. No, no, he's like he's doing. You know, he's a gamer, and like gamers are frigids. Like he's that's why he's, <laughs> he's doing that kind. That's why he's, he's doing it. Which is ironic on a guy that big and who's obviously not frigid. Yeah, that's that he's was my take. That was why I took from that game. He's hot, flexible, maybe soon to be ex-wife. Oh, well, she's with Damian Priest now. Allegedly, he is two times. Allegedly. allegedly, we can't prove that. We've we've, we've tried. That's where Dunphy is on assignment. Yeah, 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 he's not <laughs> here. He do The other guy who sometimes claims that we stole his jokes. Karang 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 Chop Karang Chop Spike Spike Dunphy Spike Dunphy Oh I remember, <laughs> remember Spike Spike little guy sits here sometimes mm. <laughs> But the, uh, the presentation of tag team wrestling hasn't been great and I think that's because they never ger, ger, for, for like a fucking 15 year period No emphasis there was, on And there was no emphasis on going like these are actually definable two guys that have characteristics and traits um, do you know similar to the, the, the world the, where he's dressed the same there was bits of that it just wasn't really well taught yeah well you had Murdoch and Cade say uh, for a while country and, lads La Resistance ah arrogant Frenchmen hard <laughs> Um but they put Rene the du- brothers lads in, who are into S&M but they put, and also brothers but they put Rene Dupree with Kenzo Suzuki then after La Resistance they split him up me. like they didn't they never gave anything a that, chance but that's very like lazy Vince, Vince McMahon Vince. gimmick and yeah, uh, tag yeah, teams what have you have split. in common you are foreign lads and everyone hates you because you're foreign. There yeah, you America! Right. Yeah, pretty much. And every tag team has to split dramatically. Yeah, but also, you know, when you kind of like, you can put two complementary characters together. I think that's a reason why, uh, I, this is my opinion, but I think Miz and R-Truth really work together as characters as well. Like there's a lot, foundation. A lot they, of common, like, commonalities, but there's a fucking, like, uh, yeah, there's they, a contrast as well. They, they completely contrast with each other. Even like the ideas of... Do you know what it is? It's a mid-90s premiership strike partnership. That's what you want. You know what I mean? That's what you need. <laughs> and you, and I, like, buddy, like, The Rock and Mick Foley are perfect examples. You need and members of Sunderland, Niall Quinn, Kevin Phillips. Phillips. Oh, Kevin Phillips, that fucking... Well, that, that's that. late 2000. That's, that's early 2000s. 2000s. That's yeah, yeah. A, like odd couple dynamics, buddy yeah. cop dynamics. Buddy cop dynamics. Very, oh, it was gold. Like, 
That's what you want in a tag team. Yeah. The I don't know, but cop. like Hawk and Animal, they were like practically the same kind of also person. Also, two hard cunts who are like... That'll work the too. Exact, <laughs> with the exact same mind frame. Yeah. Not yeah. different between them. Like, you could... One has a mohawk. You can go down... The other has you know, less actually, what I think is... Uh, I'm going on one of my tangents now again. Um, mid-90s, early to late 90s, all Japan. Uh, the presentation of Misawa with his colour scheme, emerald green and white... Uh, you had Kawada, Kobashi in the orange, Kawada in the, yellow, in the black and, and yellow, yeah. Chawe in the red. And even today, like that's like... Iconic. It's it's so iconic. And The Power Rangers, Sasha. The Power Rangers <laughs> shit. The Power Rangers. But if you look Japan. at Osprey now, his costume is a direct reference to Misawa's. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston's w- Kawada. Kawada. Like... These that Kingston was such did a an easy one against did for did one against, match, yeah. yeah against Moxley, Moxley, it was cool. Yeah, I liked it. Was that I in didn't. the Continental Classic final? No, no it, it, it was a world title like, match. There was a world title uh, main event, and, and he, he was bulldog choked him. It was during the pandemic, wasn't it? It was during the pandemic. Yeah, it was yes. Eddie, Eddie Kingston's first world title. Yes, pay per view main event, and the um, and that like is that became so men- memorable and entwined with those characters that people's costumes. 20, 30 years later are referencing those or the red, thing, red and yellow between like, Hogan yeah Hogan's red and yellow like yeah. you know Mercedes Sasha does a lot of different the variations hair. of Eddie Guerrero kind of cosplay now cosplay yeah, is yeah. a big part of wrestlers a lot of wrestlers presentation yeah, wrestlers these days are nerds man they are but like, it, like it. it is cool sometimes you see people paying homage to certain things Kevin in o- the past Kevin Owens does it with Dusty remember Dusty had yeah. have like the the the, the the jeans and he'd wear a Dusty t-shirt and like yeah. cut off Dusty t-shirt but like we have referenced it that Everything becoming generic, like people just the same color schemes all the time. Everything is black. You know what I mean? There was too much black there for a long time. For a long time. Music sounded the same. Yeah. The arenas looked the same. And therefore everything just comes across the same. I do think one thing, and this is like across multiple companies now, is wrestlers now they they became wrestlers because they wanted to be wrestlers. They weren't used up um bodybuilders or bouncers that were kind of said, hey, look, you could make money doing this wrestling. They became wrestlers because they wanted to be wrestlers. And they have this, like, care for the business, they into the history of it, and they're super creative people anyway. So I think what we're kind of seeing over the last few years is a revitalization of unique in wrestling. It's, it's not this generic black trunks shit anymore. Every, every top-line wrestler in bulk or in even other companies are all trying to do something that looks different or trying to design themselves to have their own distinct look and even, even and the nicknames and stuff and they're no? being allowed to do that they're being allowed especially to with wwe allowing a lot of people now to keep their old names and yeah. keep their old characters uh, which was so foreign mm. like they wouldn't even allow say someone like eugene to keep his character name when he went out into the independence yeah that kind of sucks, yeah you know, you know it was eugene no, it was it was it was Eugene, but it was spelled it's different. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it Eugene, was. Eugene, <laughs> we Eugene, all scream. <laughs> we all Eugene for Eugene. Uh, in terms, remember when Eugene came back with that like superhero stuff, and this uh, this is kind of going back to maybe the the body side of things. Mm. Like when you see uh, a Braden Walker when he comes in and he he's getting shit because he wasn't in the best shape and he wasn't looking like Chris Harris. Yeah, he, was, he, was he was so bland looking as well. Yeah. What, why is why is that? What is it, Braden Walker? He was know? he was knock knock. Who's there? Braden Walker. And I'm gonna smash your teeth in. He lasted like you know, two, 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 two 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 weeks. Three, three, but the pump in a singlet because he wasn't in great shape. And that's what back in 2006, Eugene when he came back, I think it was 2009. He went up against the Miz. He's friends with Randy Orton. Randy Orton got him a. A, 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 a chance remember the Miz was the Canadian kid or the Calgary kid oh yeah and did they have a contract match and Eugene came out and uh, they were fighting for a contract and Miz ended up winning it but Eugene came out and he's a bit heftier than he used to be and stuff like as a, as a viewer a casual viewer and you see these kind of guys or maybe the, the guys that had the body of lads in the 80s and that kind of thing Barrel chested, but bellies and all that. Do you think casual viewers are turned off when they see guys that aren't in complete, utter, fucking amazing shape? Like Kevin Nash going on about uh, Will Ospreay, who I think is in great shape, and for a normal human being is an amazing shape, but he doesn't look like Elias. Yeah, but if he looked like a 
I don't know why I went immediately I think to a but he had pretty good vibe. <laughs> Notoriously, uh, yeah, built. I was wondering, well, I was like, like... I think you need variety. I think, you know, Vince McMahon used to always have the airport rule for wrestlers, which is, you know, he hired wrestlers based on their ability to turn heads in an airport. And also, like, sometimes, like, you are compelled by what you're compelled by. Like, I mean, I, like, you know, I wasn't fucking popping for, like, you know... Uh, like Mark Jindrak in the same way that I was popping for Taz when I was younger, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, actually, yeah. Like, like, because it's still going to be down to the person's innate charisma, believability, uh, what the gimmick is. is more well, the, charisma too. is actually more important. Yeah. Ultimately. But why wasn't it back then? Then why was everyone well, like, like because it was so in new. the late nineties with Foley and Austin yeah, and all Vince these McMahon guys? Austin very... was fucking shredded. Like he, he wasn't shredded. He was a, a bit. He was a big dude. Yeah, he had a bit of a like a pouch on him. I mean, look, Vince was never going to book like small guys. Like Foley and Austin were big guys, but I think he was just he had a very prescriptive view of how a wrestler looked and actually yeah. it was like, like his entire career is people proving that wrong Austin wasn't Hogan or fucking you know what I mean Sid Sid yeah like he d- didn't fit into that body mold but he was the most charismatic wrestler probably he would ever he just so like, have to be 6 foot 2 and like you fairly, know fucking 200 and fucking 50 shape, pounds like, yeah Which, it was funny actually remember when Tyson came in for the WrestleMania 14 stuff I didn't realise how big Austin was till you see him beside Tyson. He's Tyson's huge. a heavyweight boxer, like. Yeah. But when we're going on about like say Vince and his penchant and his long massive penchant for, for body Big guys, meaty like, men. But like Brett. He would be classified as a small guy. That came, Sean was that a, was time that was set, yeah, yeah, right. Right. So Also, there's like you know, it's like having you know two out of three or whatever. Brat was also like a, a certifiable fucking teen heartthrob type character, which True. they never kind of had before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Michael said that, and also he was he, like an amazing type of wrestler. Von Eric type so like, yeah. yeah, he was a Von Eric type heartthrob, and to, that those elements were enough for Brett to get that spot because it was like, okay, he might be six foot and he might be the biggest guy. But and the way he's he amazing pre- in the ring and the way he, he presents he's himself. Marketable. Yeah, he's mar- he looks like a cartoon, yeah. a walking cartoon yeah. character because mm. of his colour scheme and stuff. Yeah. I think that got the lost. The colour scheme was massive for him. It's so unique, yeah. The, the homogenization, as you would say, of wrestling, I think was, has been so detrimental. And that, that's why I worry now when I see AEW going down the LED route because that homogenizes the industry across two companies. I want... This was, the same, this was the same problem in TNA, like, you know, when Bischoff and Hogan took over and TNA. Yeah, when they started the, making, like, WWE, Monday Night Wars again, WWE and Light, and you're going, no, be the alternative. Like, I stick want something to your, different. Like, yeah. Will the alternative your, ultimately get over? Like, yeah, will it no. become, will, like, that, that's the thing. WWE, so, there, WWE is a behemoth for a reason. Yeah, but there's, so, this, there's this brain rot that goes around that um, an alternative, it, like, you have to be number one. Yeah, like the alternative has to overtake WWE. That's competitiveness. Though. No, th- but that's just stupid. It spurs, like, it spurs each like, one to be better. Do do Pepsi not make shit loads of money every year being the number two soda company? Exactly. Yeah, just be the number two and be different and be good at it. Me, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you think, do you think variety. Pepsi and Coke are like bidding for uh, people? Yeah, yeah they're like bid, that. there's yeah. a bidding. There's war. a free agent coming up from <laughs> Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in and the blows then yeah. <laughs> down the Mall of America, yeah. dropping off a thing of Coke. Um, but yeah, I, I think like you can be number two and you can be different. You can be extremely. Um, like, we, this thing of Bischoff, like, going to war in the 90s, if the Monday Night Wars never happened, and they just existed, and they kind of were the the pre- premier southern wrestling company, and WWE kept kind of East Coast and urban centers, and then WCW go bankrupt eventually some other way, and then AEW start up, we wouldn't be sitting here discussing a war. It's mm. just we've ended up in this framing of wrestling wars. Yeah. Uh, and like, where in reality, like Nike and Adidas, they coexist. Um, all these major companies around the world coexist in the same markets. Is there something in wrestling? Say, if you were to go in and change something within wrestling, whatever company you want, what would be the things that you would change in terms of presentation? I would have AW look like uh, changed guardrails. Madison's yes, I go back to the old steel guardrails. It would look exactly like Madison Square Garden for a Bruno Sammartino defense. Everyone up to the point. Everyone no smoking one, no cigarettes. One, no <laughs> one kid to be seeing. Everyone no kids, smoking. Yeah. Everyone, everyone, everyone making bets. Smoking. <laughs> that's all around money around the front row. Big Foley's in the crowd yeah. shouting on the, at the murder yeah, jumping off a murderer jumping out the cage. Basically, the light and just the ring is lit. Like the entire audience are in darkness. I'm on board. Why? I, I, I would love that. Yeah. I would. Love I, that. I would like. 
more retro stuff. Like, remember when they did the Raw anniversary in the Hammerstein? Uh, well, it looked the exact same. Yeah. Look, NWA Power started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I thought that looked great. That was bring, but that was bringing back, like, you know, like mid south from the early 80s. Yeah, yeah, it was like, I would, I would, it looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. I would love more callbacks on a. Like an individual to make a raw seem a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not all raws. Just one raw. Call, the raw retro. A- retro AW raw. stopped doing this as well. You, yeah, they like used they, to have. Yeah, like uh, they had a Patrick's Day fight one. Fight for the fall. Fight for the, the fall. Patrick's Day, whatever. Um, no, they didn't. Well, they had ba- they had Battle of the Bells. They had the Boston thing there recently. I suppose they still do it from they, time they, to time. You know yeah. that they're showing the Jericho cruise. Yeah, yeah. What, was, what was the Boston thing? The big, uh, big business. Big, 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 big business. business. Like all and all these things. Save for video games, I, which is the AW have fallen down. And I hate them so much, and that's where my lack of trust comes from. Is that directly from that fucking video game but like that's this is all marketable shit yeah you know i would love a raw retro from the hammer or not hammerstein one of the fucking the, things what was they the place the radio city music hall is yeah. that what i used to do like and them? shoot it as if it was like that yes you know yeah. have I'm Sebu, totally, i love that i, I have think Sebu that's a great jump idea. off a raw sign and slip and fall yeah. do a, a full retro maybe don't attitude bring raw boom. or an ad, imagine a smackdown with the smackdown fist you know what I mean? Yeah. Do do shit like that. Have the guardrails a bit different and make us look forward to these kind of things. Yeah. Instead Spe- of special events. Yeah. Events. Like I would tune in for that as opposed to some random SmackDown. Like, I think then what we all agree on is that wrestling has become too homogenized and even some ways too corporate with the look of the belts and branding. And it needs things need to be more unique and individual. There's room for fucking around with. It's such a creative industry that I don't know why they don't lean into that more. Yeah. Yeah. More wrestling in pubs. Yeah. More, just, that's all we want. Wrestle. I wrestled one time in the back of a pub in Tremor. It was the worst experience of my life. Ah, that's just <laughs> it was Tremor. Like, that's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it, it was terrible because uh, the ring gear, they, someone ribbed me. Or they gave me ring gear, but it was like a woman's signal. Right. It? Well, look, and Shane, just... you needed to freshen up your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you were gone stale. Yeah, I was gone stale. stale. I should have magnum TA'd the shit. No, <laughs> I went out in the in the the most ill fitting tights. It was a rest. It was a woman's wrestling. Si- it wasn't even a wrestling singlet. I think they just gave me a woman's top. We just uh, wearing a leotard they found on the prom and fucking drama. I genuinely <laughs> think that, and I was young, and I was like twenty stone, and they were like, "Put that on." And it was like for a fucking medium woman, and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I went on, and I just made an absolute show of myself. That was. It was a good gimmick. I really enjoyed your medium woman run. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose, yeah. John, anything? No, I mean, I think, yeah, I think more unique presentations would be good. I think uh, leaning into, like, hometown gimmickry mm-hmm. is always really good. You know, like, you know, when you're in Nashville, let's have a few fucking uh, country, uh, singers. Co- country singers. Bring and like, out. Um, yeah, just tie it in a little bit more where you can. I mean, I think AEW are not quite as original as they were I still think they are kind of slightly different uh, presentation to uh, WWE I just think both companies just need to lean into it a little bit more keep things fresh I think WWE are actually kind of doing it yeah. I, I know it might be a bit tired in like UFC etc but it is unique seeing like sponsorship for example on the on the map it'd be interesting to see what happens when it's not fucking prime but like uh, that alone is at least it, it, it's a massive change in presentation in a company that was cobwebs for 20 years yeah like the, they're, you know that they're going to bring out like a, a prime play set with the hydration thing in the corner and all this yeah they are that always gets knocked over yeah, plenty to look forward to yeah well and TNA I think TNA needs to stop looking like a fucking energy drink yes the ropes are just they, they fuck me up go back to the six sided ring TNA well yeah that's been our talk on presentations our TED talk our pre- present TED talk thanks for tuning in <laughs> present TED talk I, t- I lost it I <laughs> Well, look, I thought you did a very good I job. Thought, I think you did. You did a good job. You, you tried something new. You tried to mix up the presentation. And it failed miserably. It and did. There's a lesson in that for wrestling companies. Hey, so yeah. I'm not fucking dumpy. <laughs> we don't rag on me. We rag on him. He's not here. Who? Yeah. You have to bully someone. You can't try unless you're willing to fail. Exactly. Well, that's been the Wrestle Fad Wrestle Show. Thanks very much for listening. Subscribe and like. I've been the big beef boy, Shaz Beef. This is my old book partner. This is Kenny Omega. We are the elite. And Dumpy's a... Not I. I was going to say like who's who's on assignment. The, he's on assignment. Yeah, he's on assignment. Oh, well, I was going to. Who's the fucking elite's biggest like Brandon, four? Brandon. Co- oh, biggest four. Yeah. Uh, CM, CM Punk. Punk. Yeah. <laughs> He'd like that though. No, don't tell him. He's CM, not CM Dump. <laughs> he could be. Ha- he could be our hangman. Okay, I'm. Yeah, okay. Are we the? I, I, do I want to be? Yeah. We're, we're young boss. There you go. Thanks for listening.